Julie expects to exchange more pins with tourists from around the world today and wear them on his tuxedo. Got a, we need to send you a flat one, don't we, so you don't lose it off here. This experienced doorman in the lobby of the Victoria Falls Hotel in Zimbabwe enjoys seeing off old friends and welcoming new ones. Let me take you inside there. Well, come to the... Besides his concierge work, Julie is also responsible for the luggage department. When there is too much work for his bellhops, he'll lend a hand. Okay, would you mind to come with me to yeah. the check-in point, please? Hello, Mama. Hello. Yes, come with me. Mind. <laughs> Julie. The left of the bridge, that is Zimbabwe. What you see, something burning there, that is the mighty force. The real name of the falls is called Mosia Tunya. It means the smoke that thunders. On your left, that's Zimbabwe. On your right, that's Zambia. At the mid, that's where people do bungee jumping. That is 111 meters. As the largest and most spectacular waterfall in Africa, the Victoria Falls is revered by tourists all around the world. It's said that there are women beating jemba drums deep in the pools under the waterfall, making a thunderous roar. Their dresses form colorful rainbows, and the spray rises to become clouds of different shapes. But it hasn't always been easy to appreciate this wonder of the world. Victoria Falls Airport was built in the 1960s. The original design was a long way from meeting the demands of modern aviation. The runway can only handle small planes, and tourists have to make several transfers to reach the town. Supported by the Chinese government and financed by a loan from the Export-Import Bank of China, the Victoria Falls International Airport expansion project broke ground in 2013. Xi Information India, Kilich 1020. On March 1st, 2017, a South African Airways Airbus A330-200 landed at Victoria Falls Airport. Carrying 222 passengers, it was the first ever wide-body aircraft to land there. Victoria Falls City became quite busy because of the surge in passenger numbers. Visitors needed to book their hotel room a year in advance. Since the expansion, we've seen the numbers growing uh, steadily. We have seen a 20% increase in the first year, 
that the airport started operating in arrivals. And this year, in our first quarter, we were 11% up from last year. Eight carriers, including South Africa Airways, Kenya Airways and British Airways, currently fly in and out of Victoria Falls Airport. Annual passenger numbers surged from around 200,000 before the expansion to 345,000 in 2017. Some Chinese airlines are also studying the feasibility of flying direct to the city. Tourism is a pillar industry in many African countries. Their virgin forests, wild animals, sincere people and diversified cultures attract tourists from all around the world. More than 20 African countries have issued preferential visa policies for Chinese citizens. China and Africa are embracing an historic opportunity for cooperation in tourism, encapsulated by the slogan, Go to Africa, Discover the Charm. Their bilateral partnership has encouraged both sides to take a key step forward in travel and visa facilitation. Today, Chinese tourists can tour Africa anytime they like. Quickly expanding cooperation in tourism can be a major step forward in deepening economic partnerships and people-to-people -people exchanges among the Belt and Road countries. Infrastructure such as airports and seaports shows how open a country is to the outside world. They're also a key factor in determining just how competitive African tourism is. The 20 or so joint airport expansion projects between China and Africa are an engine in drawing foreign capital and promoting opening up and development on the continent. And of course, both sides believe that development should be common, intensive, green and safe. For more than a decade, as a sincere, practical, trustworthy and faithful friend of Africa and a staunch supporter of its vision for peace, China has sent peacekeepers to several countries on the continent, such as Mali, Liberia, South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Its work has been within the framework of the United Nations and is helping to maintain peace and stability whilst reducing the chances of conflict and war. Pingun as one of the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, China has earnestly fulfilled its responsibilities and duties. Of the five, it has also provided the largest number of peacekeepers. Since 1990, Chinese troops have served on 24 UN peacekeeping missions, engaging 37,000 personnel. Currently, about 2,000 Chinese peacekeepers are on duty in Africa. Eight Chinese soldiers have lost their lives there on active duty. A stable social order and peaceful environment provides a necessary precondition for foreign investment. The Hawassa Industrial Park in southern Ethiopia was built by the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation and financed by the national government. It opened six months ago, but there are already 19 international enterprises in its 52 workshops. Each day, tens of thousands of employees work here, a number which places a lot of pressure on the park's operations manager, Fizem. Yeah, 
bad for me. You just disappeared. Yes. Mr. But Danny told me you'll visit us if there is any problem. Uh, yes. So but that means you don't have any problem, any issue. Yeah, but yesterday for we have a very big uh, issue for our company. Build the plan, the country has established 14 industrial zones altogether. And what connects them, most importantly, is a Chinese built railway. The electrified rail line running from the nation's capital, Addis Ababa, to the port of Djibouti on the Red Sea is Ethiopia's first. The Ababa Djibouti Railway stretches for 752 kilometers. The trip used to take seven days by road, but is now only 10 hours by train. It underpins just how crucial an efficient transport network is for the success of the 14 industrial parks. 十四个工业园都位于雅吉铁路的沿线this is quite a tremendous achievement, you see. Uh, we want to scale up the service coverage of the train uh, by including uh, not only containers, but also other vehicle import cargoes, uh, dry bulk and liquid bulk cargoes. From industrial parks to railway logistics, an intensive cooperation model has been devised to build the required integrated platforms for local economic development. As Africans seek a localized strategy for development, China is working with them to develop ideas and search for African solutions to African problems. While old enterprises in Africa are undergoing revitalization, new firms have never ceased to emerge. New models, concepts and technologies tailored to meet local conditions appear thick and fast. Techno mobile phone may be still unknown in China, but it has become one of the most popular cell phone brands in Africa. In March 2017, three Techno products were included on a list of Africa's top 100 most admired brands in a popular British magazine, thanks to their developers. This replica of an African streetscape at Transient's R&D Center in Shanghai is designed to recreate a typical daily environment. African staffers are indispensable in the work. They are testing to see if the photo function of a newly developed product is suitable for African people.
In 2017, based on an upbeat assessment of prospective gains, the China-Africa Fund for Industrial Cooperation invested 80 million yuan in Transia. It's currently one of the continent's top sellers of cell phones and is one of 11 projects the fund has investments in. Besides telecommunications, it has also funded resources, energy and industrial manufacturing projects within the framework of China-Africa cooperation, drawing down an overall investment of nearly $10 billion. At 40 minutes past midnight, December 11, 2017, Algeria's first communications satellite, the Alcomsat-1, blasted off from the Xichang Satellite Launch Center in southwest China's Sichuan province and later entered its predetermined orbit. The North African country, tens of thousands of miles away, finally had its own satellite. Since the Johannesburg summit, young scientists from China and Africa have enhanced exchanges and joined the Global Innovation Network, achieving breakthroughs in areas such as biomolecules and telecommunications, drawing plenty of global attention in the process. iTech has become a new growth point in China-Africa cooperation. In Africa, technology is also helping to revitalize many traditional industries. 32-year-old Bongani Ndiambo is installing lights on the first cars to roll off the assembly line in the South African plant of Beijing Automobile International Corporation. I was originally a repair worker. I checked for some of the ads they listed on the, on the newspaper and then uh, through uh, examination, fortunately I uh, became a, a staff. The first assembly plant to be built by the Chinese corporation in South Africa, once fully operational, will create 2,500 direct jobs as well as more than 10,000 other posts throughout the production process. On July 24, 2018, Chinese President Xi Jinping and the new South African leader Cyril Ramaphosa were present to see the first car come off the assembly line at BAIC Automobile South Africa. The moment marked the beginning of normal operations at the Coiga Industrial Development Zone near Port Elizabeth, BAIC's first overseas assembly plant. Chisha The equator passes right through the heart of the African continent, but this doesn't necessarily mean very high temperatures. High altitudes and temperate climates create a paradise for wild animals and plant life. The banks of the White Nile in Uganda, for instance, are a natural habitat for many remarkable species. In Kayunga, 90 kilometers from the nation's capital, Kampala, a flock of African great egrets have settled on an inhabited islet in the middle of the Great River. Alongside the islet, the construction of the Isimba hydropower station is underway.
This clean energy project, built by the China International Water and Electric Corporation, CWE, and financed by a loan from the Export-Import Bank of China and the Ugandan government, will have a designed capacity of 183 megawatts. This is a friendly environment. It doesn't have a big lake. It's not going to really destroy the river. his trip to Zimbabwe in late 2015, President Xi visited a local wildlife sanctuary, Wild is Life, and saw some of the animals it rescued. Wildlife protection is a major area of cooperation between China and Zimbabwe. China has been working with African countries to strengthen their wildlife protection capacities through material aid and the exchange of expertise. In late 2016, China activated a comprehensive ban on commercial ivory processing and sales. It has promoted international cooperation on wildlife conservation, whilst also making strenuous efforts to implement international treaties. During the breeding season, from May to July, adult egrets go in search of food. Besides the small fish and shrimp in the Nile, a large number of mollusks and aquatic insects living in dam cracks also enrich their diet. As the first baby egrets of the season come into the world, the Asimba station is also finishing the installation of its first power generation unit. At the end of the day, the workers gather on the riverbank nearby. Here, they enjoy looking up at the sky and into the clear water, being so close to nature and the wildlife. Chongfangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangang
In November 2012, the idea of a community with a shared future for mankind was first proposed. Over the past six years, the concept has been reiterated many times by President Xi Jinping at various international events. Today, the world is a global village, and we are all connected, whether we are on the coast of the seas or. com o aumento do investimento privado chinês em Angola, com a manutenção das linhas de... development goals and common strategic interests, and the building of a closer community of common destiny requires their joint efforts to enhance top-level design, uphold strategic leadership, forge agreements, coordinate actions, roll out new pragmatic cooperation measures, and achieve a higher level of mutual benefit and win-win cooperation. I was not a chef, but I was like my parents, like my father, my father, we come from different backgrounds, we have different work ethics, we have different cultures, but this has, uh, has again given us an opportunity to basically learn from each other. We expect very many people to be moving going to work and going to other different purposes.